We now move on to our next presenter, who is Mr. Aminuddin Ibrahim Lastar. He's from FPP. The topic of his presentation is student engagement in online learning. Mr. Aminuddin, I invite you to deliver your presentation. Please share your screen. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, moderator, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Um, Kenneth. Uh, <clears throat> Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Um, yang dihormati Datuk Professor Dr. Taufik Yap, uh, Vice Chancellor U UMS, Yang Bursa Professor Dr. Rasid Mail, Deputy Vice uh, Chancellor of UMS, Yang Bursa Professor Dr. Fung Sun Fook, Director of PEP and all fellows um, lecturers. So thank you um, very much for being here with us in the second seminar on soaring above pandemic challenges. And, and thank you for giving me uh, PEP. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of sharing some ideas and perhaps opinions regarding uh, what is going on uh, in, in our new norms. Eh? And um, I'd like to show. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, um, my name is uh, Minudin Ibrahim Rasta. I'm from Faculty of Psychology and Education. Um, the topic that I like to talk this morning is about uh, SV3 makes learning flexible. Um, when we are talking about uh, soaring above pandemic challenges at UMS, so one of the most important thing that we have to, to, to think about is how to make uh, learning process uh, among our uh, students uh, more flexible and most important thing, how to achieve our CLO. So these are the things that we have to uh, think um, very carefully and, and uh, we need not to, to to take it very lightly. So when when it's come to the flexibility, uh, then again, how how flexible can can it be? Uh, we have fourteen weeks. Does it mean uh, flexible uh, has to be uh, within the fourteen weeks? Yes, it, it has to be within fourteen weeks. And how how does it goes about? What's about their attendance? What's about their? There are so many questions that might come 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 in when we are talking about uh, making learning flexibility because the our stakeholders, the students, uh, are actually uh, a part of our uh, concern here. So. Um, Moving to the next slide. So, as an introduction, we use the word online learning when, when, um, when we are in this new norm um, about a year, more than a year ago. So, uh, since we are living in this new norm, so uh, all of us have faced with uh, too much challenges, especially when it's come to the implementation of online learning. So, basically, online learning has been used in different contexts there are so many 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 ways that we 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 use the word uh, online learning all this while but once we uh, uh, pp uh, has introduced or uh, implemented uh, uh, 1732 according to kpi uh, by the higher um, uh, ministry so um, we have a very focused online learning now and I am now talking about uh, Smart UMS, our LMS, Learning Management System, uh, which include um, probably uh, distributed learning and maybe hybrid learning and online distance learning, which has been, been mentioned by, by Marx and, and Click in, in 2005. And online learning is actually re refers to the use of all these information, all these uh, knowledge content and communication technology in using uh, ICT. So it comes in diverse aspect of education, uh, whereby the main uh, purpose is to support uh, the the learning process. So uh, these are the things that we have to to we we already know actually, <laughs> and but uh, we are sometimes it's it's we are we're not aware how important this platform are. We have heard from Mr. Yuzaini just now using a. Uh, uh, Twitter as a as a platform, but uh, we 
other than that, we also need to use our uh, smart UMS as well. So in an online learning environment, um, as I have mentioned earlier, there are so many set of tools and technology that can be uh, used together. And for example, internet mediated teaching. So this is what we are actually practicing. Internet uh, mediated teaching through uh, Google Meet, uh, WebEx, uh, smart UMS especially and uh, TV and radio broadcasting. I'm not very sure how many are using TV and broadcasting um, uh, base. Uh, I'm not using TV and radio broadcasting as well, but somehow uh, we, in, uh, in order to use TV, instead of using TV and radio bro broadcasting, we uh, upload uh, some YouTubes and, and put it in the, uh, in the uh, smart UMS. Eh? And virtual classroom also uh, been used uh, quite uh, largely by some of our colleagues and distributed learning. So <clears throat> the technologies is as uh, mentioned is actually uh, to make the learning more flexible. So that is how it is. That is what it's supposed to be. So in online learning, the thing is flexibilities. So the question is how flexible can it be? Uh, online learning gives institutions and learners the flexibility when it's come to the venue and time. So although we have uh, uh, issues regarding attendance, but we have to bear in mind that uh, sometimes we also having problem with connection, internet connection, internet reception, and all these things. What's about those students? We have students from everywhere uh, in, in, in Malaysia, part of, uh, in many parts of Malaysia, uh, not to name uh, some from uh, as further as Northern Hemisphere in China and in, in, in Southern Hemisphere. So these students, we might sharing the same time zone, but we are sharing the same internet connection or internet reception. So these are the challenges as, as we are starting above this pandemic uh, um, um, time. So how do we ensure that what we are going to give them uh, to the students can, can be achieved by them? Uh, how do we ensure that they, they submit their, their uh, uh, assignment or task on time? So if we are being a little bit flexible on that, if we are giving more time compared to what we've been practicing before, uh, the pandemic. So I am very sure that uh, the, the chances for, for these students to, to gain knowledge and to follow uh, our uh, lesson is, is so much better. And uh, online learning is seen as uh, flexible and often make use of technologies, which involves so many things. Lah. Yeah? And then, uh, of course, online learning signal a revolution in teaching and learning, which has undeniable impact on the education system. So we can't deny this. We are moving forward. So if we are not using ICT in our teaching, so we might be left behind. So they are uh, people, they are universities, they are uh, colleges who are advanced in using this. So I suppose that uh, we are on the right track. Uh, P PEP has uh, uh, imposed and implement, implement and impose uh, right thing uh, in, in, in our education systems here in UMS. So why flexible? So there are many things when it's come why flexible. Perhaps the flexibility in, in learning has been talked for uh, quite some time. Eh? Uh, let's not go that far away, but uh, let's go back to, let's say, in 1988 or in 1985, perhaps. So they've been talking about flexible in, in, in teaching back then eh? because this flexible learning, learning involves Learning process involves metacognitive, uh, motivational, Mr. and Mr. Amin, much I'm sorry, yes. Mr. Amin, stop moving. Uh, Atau oh, how? Stop moving from what? The pada mana tadi ya? Display dia tak dia static. Mungkin belum. Saya uh, saya. Uh, uh, di Sekejap di mana ya. tu ya? Uh, I don't know about the rest. Ah, okay. It's been in uh, slide number one or the one. Okay. Oh, yeah. really? I, 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 I,
click hold on slide to sorry interrupt sikit yeah, no 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 problem no problem so uh, so i am actually dekat slide number 5 actually sekarang ni okay i stop sharing for one minute maaf so i will uh, share it could be uh, my connection juga kot yeah So I'm at uh, here. Uh, why flexible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So okay. all right. Yeah. So 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 sorry about that. <laughs> so when we are talking about uh, how student learn, so student learning using, of course, we know all these things: metacognitive, mo they need motivations, and of course, it's involved behavioral and their learning strategies. So it shows that we don't only have one student, but we have a lot of students. And all these students can using all different types of learning, uh, behavioral learning strategies. So in flexible learning, if we are going back like in 1985, what has been said by Zimmerman, uh, motivational process is very important. So if they are not being motivated by how we present our our uh, content or how they could learn how they can uh, um, reach at our content so it will demotivate them and this motivational needs to come with the flexibility in how they can manage to get their their content weeks by weeks and all those tutorial activities weeks by week and for for the rest of about 14 weeks so self-regulated uh, come from motivational aspect so when they are motivated so they are more uh, self-regulated and it shows that by the moment those uh, self-regulated uh, learners uh, have reported high effi effi efficacy to arrive at us self-efficacy is another question and it's all about motivation as well and self-attribution we have a lot of questions about uh, self-attribution so we don't want students to blame on the system we don't want uh, uh, students to blame on on the pandemic so a pandemic and system has always be the reasons of not studying, uh, not able to learn, not able to reach the lecturers, not able to 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 uh, submit the the, uh, the the assignment, or not even able to know what the task uh, that they're supposed to 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 carry out. So these are all uh, putting attributions on 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 the others. I mean, instead of having self attributions. They, they, they are doing a lot of uh, distribution errors, like uh, external dis uh, attributions. So uh, then, uh, of course, they will say the task is not interesting, it's, it's too heavy, it's, it's, and blah, blah, blah. So many questions. So we don't want this. To avoid this from happening, so I personally think that they should have a flexible uh, way of learning and allow time for them to learning. Of course, we have time frame. So that is very important because it is the guidance. So uh, in eight, 1986, again, these are people are saying in what, what they have been uh, same as a Zimmerman again said in the behavioral process, self-regulated learners choose, organize and create surrounding that maximize their learning. So how do they create their surrounding that can maximize their learning if we do not provide flexibility in their learning? Remember, they have to have motivation to learn so that they can, can have a, a higher self-efficacy and self-esteem. And then again, in a year after that, what uh, Bokaskis and uh, Schneider in 1986 says, in terms of metacognitive process, self-regulated student plan, set goals, organize, self-monitor, and self-evaluate at several levels during the process of acquiring knowledge. So acquiring knowledge has to be done in such a way that they know that they have guidelines, they have time frame, and their learning is a little bit flexible because we know that they are 
uh, having difficulties in for example, time zone, internet connection, financial burden, and all those other things that we can think of. And the list might be very long. Um, moving slide. So why flexible? So this is another important question. Why that we have to do it? Uh, why the learning has to be flexible? So we know that individual differences are the more or less enduring psychological characteristic that each of our students has. So then again, when we are talking about individual differences, so we cannot run away from what Badura said. And there are three things, environment, shape behavior, behavior, shape environment. So what kind of environment that we are creating? What kind of behavior that we are uh, uh, expecting? So these are the things, and of course, these two things require a bigger process, what is called the cognitive factors, which influence the expectations and the attitude from the students, regardless uh, or the, the, the bad attitudes or, or less, uh, whatever that, that the negative aspect attitudes. But then again, as an uh, educator, so I personally think that we have to do something and look at uh, the flexibility of learning so that student can uh, achieve what is what we we desired uh, or at least in the long term the the PLO. So we have issues actually. The issues is this is what uh, uh, done by Irawan uh, Disona and. Let's study in 2020, psychological impact of students on online learning during the pandemic COVID-19 do cause boredom, especially among the low achievers. <clears throat> they are low achievers. We have low achievers students. So with all the obstacles, with all the challenges, with rigid time, with rigid, all those rigid things, it's make them draw back from learning. If we allow more flexibility to them, perhaps we can help these low achievers at least to gain something from, uh, from, from what they're supposed to learn in that uh, module or in, in, during that semester. So um, another research should boredom display low self-control. So low self-control, it means that they just let everything loose, uh, self-regulated problem, um, and all the other thing can be said, the word malas and all those things. Lah, yeah? So this shows that individuals who tend to be drilled are unable to arrange, guide, regulate, and direct the form of behavior that can bring it to the positive direction. So it's more, they are going more towards the negativities instead of positivities that we are desired. <clears throat> right, so here is the answer. Our LMS, Learning Management System, we have activities and we have resources. We have feedback, forum, groceries, interactive content, lesson, quiz, uh, com package, service, uh, wikis, workshop. And also we have book and everything. We have it all here. The thing is, uh, what is a little bit lack here is, uh, I personally think, let's say we have chat here. You also have chat here. Uh, it is not as uh, favorable for the students because they have to log in uh, compared to whatever that they have already like WhatsApps, uh, Telegrams and others, uh, Instagram and others. That make it a little bit different, uh, com uh, the application of chat, but it can be done. For example, <clears throat> For example, here chat. We can have chat with them. Some of them like to chat. Some of them don't. Some some of them don't even like to speak out using the microphone. But if we let them chat, they <laughs> we're having problem in in answering all those questions. And then we have forum. And if we think that we don't have much time in answering all those questions from them during in in the chat room, so we can just give them forum a question, a situation, and we can get more opinion from them. We give, we give them time, we give them a time frame within uh, four, three, four days, perhaps. And I'm sure within that, that, that more than um, 48 hours, they can come out or going somewhere or have a, uh, a nice time to give their opinion in, in the forum. 
and wikis allow more time so that more information, more ideas will come in whenever that they have time, when they browse somewhere else and read some for information, they can put in in the wiki, they add into that uh, knowledge, content knowledge that we have set for them. And then of course, feedback. We, this is very important. Feedback doesn't mean at the end of the semesters. Feedback can be at every week. This is where we learn. This is where we can improve. So this help us. And of course, um, be and big blue button. This is beautiful <laughs> apps in big blue button. So uh, you can um, record it and post it back or it can be uh, live and, and all these things. But all these are the solution for the flexible learning um, uh, in context of a smart EMS. So um, as a conclusion, flexibility in learning would allow more opportunity for students to learn. They have, they become, uh, they know what they do. They can arrange their time uh, whenever it's raining or the, the connection is not strong. They know that they have time. They, they, they've been, they know that they've been appreciated and they know that they matters to us. And of course, understanding the challenges is very important. There are many challenges that we have to understand, that we have to consider the, lo the geolocation, the financial burdens, and I think these are the, the topmost issues that we have to um, consider when we are uh, using online learning with them. So with that, I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Aminuddin, for your sharing on using the Smart Tree Learning Management System. Uh, I now open the floor to Q&A. Are there any questions from the audience? Please post it in your chat window or turn on your microphone. Hello, uh, Pro. Pro. Yeah, please proceed. So, uh, Congratulations to Mr. Amin for the great presentations. I just wonder about, yes, it's a, we need a flexibility, but during the uh, regulating by MQA, so how can we balance between flexibility and MQA part? Maybe Brother Amin can say okay, something. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Mahajirin. So uh, I I do take that uh, MQA requirement and all those things uh, very seriously because we have to take that very seriously. So uh, to me, uh, flexibilities uh, there, uh, of course, uh, when it's come to the attendance aspect, when it's come to the attendance aspect, so uh, it is understood that if we, let's say, if we have make it compulsory or mandatory for everyone to attend from from uh, two to four, for example, during this during the the lectures, and we most likely we won't get that hundred percent attendance. So if we have that uh, OBE system, extended hours, I'll just extend the hours earlier and 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 later. I'm sure that that won't be any problem because the thing is the attendance uh, and, and we have we have the attendance recorded. This is what I think. We have the attendance recorded and we have the session on. And on top of that, of course, when we are conducting our lectures on the uh, Google Meet, for example, uh, we it is recorded. Sometimes uh, the, the auditor will ask, do you have the recording? So we have that recorded. And also uh, beside that, uh, of course, we upload our lectures and uh, notes in the uh, Smart UMS. So I think that covers the, the, uh, the aspect of M MQA as long as, of course, uh, the CLO1 or CLO2 or CLO3 or 4 is, is, is uh, complied. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Madirin. Good question. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Madirin. Thank you, Dr. Amin. Any further questions? I have one question. Yes, Professor Rasid, please proceed. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah, prof. to let the rest to ask question, but seems uh, only uh, the Tamahadirin ask questions. Yeah, uh, flexible. Uh, yeah, flexibility is there. It's very interesting. Congratulations, uh, uh, the Tamahadirin. Uh, 
Uh, you, the notion of flexibility, I think, uh, is quite uh, subjective in, in, in this uh, nature. It wish that we might uh, provide uh, equipment, technology to enable uh, flexibility in uh, the dissemination and uh, teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is a fundamental uh, question that normally ask in, 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 in this uh, context. Uh, uh, although we able to provide the flexibility through the technology, through the mechanism, structure, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes uh, we also question uh, the nurturing process. You see, the nurturing process. We might be able to pro provide flexibility through whatever mechanism, but nurturing is what we always mention, kan, macam kita kalau uh, orang lain uh, macam makanan segera, kan, uh, through the machine. Uh, very flexible, tetapi is compared to kalau mak kita masak kan dia punya nurturing tu. Jadi yeah. di dalam education, people always debating about uh, will we be able to nurture student dalam bentuk yang normal in in such a way that although the online system is flexible, tetapi pelajar kita ni bila dia sebelum pandemik tu dia jadi matang uh, dalam uh, Ya, dalam uh, aktiviti harian hidup di, hmm. di di campus ada masalah bangun lewat doing naughty naughty things for example kan dia serama kan biasalah budak-budak muda kan so uh, in in the context of this flexibility Dr Aminuddin from your experience kan it's good for you to share that how how you want to optimize this flexibility yang ada dengan teknologi, dengan LMS, whatsoever. Tetapi dalam masa yang sama, preserve uh, the necessary, necessary component tadi itu. Supaya student kita, dia lepas 3-4 years, dia kita lahirkan dia dalam nature, dia dalam bentuk yang uh, tidak jauh bezanya dengan uh, kalau dia dihasilkan uh, bukan secara online. Uh, what, what do you think about it? Uh, thank you prof yang ni memang betul-betul kena soaring above ni kan <laughs> soaring above and looking down uh, uh, your point you have a very strong point uh, prof Rasid. so uh, memang uh, that is one of the uh, challenges that we have uh, apa yang kita hasilkan uh, contoh contoh uh, kalau saya bagi contoh lain pula kan apa yang kita hasil ikan yang kita hasilkan hybrid di lab berbanding dengan ikan yang yang uh, uh, di, dibesarkan di di laut Hatch. contohnya ya yeah. Hatch, di laut ya yeah. so uh, itu perbezaan yang sangat besar ya uh, macam itulah juga kalau kita tengok Nemo tu kan dengan dengan uh, dalam cerita Nemo tu bagaimana perbezaan yang sangat ketara uh, yang when it come to the aspect of uh, nurture ya yeah. uh, tetapi dan again ada satu aspek lagi yang pada pendapat saya nature itu pun memainkan peranan yang penting juga to shape they might miss all those experience uh, living in campus uh, they might not uh, know their their colleagues uh, especially yang yang first year tu kan uh, they definitely uh, never have a contact ataupun berdepan dengan uh, mereka kawan-kawan kelip but they actually know each other so to me uh, as things are getting so much better uh, i don't think so that they will miss much of this uh, college uh, ataupun uh, campus life bila mereka balik semula nanti although the the uh, apa uh, uh, banyaklah usaha-usaha untuk 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 merapatkan hubungan itu perlu diadakan dan pengalaman-pengalaman hidup di kampus itu macam something yang very new for them apabila mereka balik semula nanti hopefully insyaAllah uh, next semester kot eh Prof eh <laughs> jadi uh, kita assume bila bila, <laughs> bila tahun 2 mereka masuk tahun 2 mereka start something new dan uh, memang uh, kalau bandingkan dengan student lain spending 3 uh, years in campus mereka mungkin only spending 2 years in campus but that can be catch up dan saya rasa personally tidak 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 akan uh, mengganggu mengganggu banyak-banyak uh, urusan dari segi uh, personal development dalam diri uh, pelajar kita 
dia masih ada lagi dia semangat teamwork tu still ada walaupun online pun masih ada juga teamwork punya 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 element if you are talking about that one lah prof Okay. I might miss a few points juga sana juga prof. <laughs> Panjang tak kita cuma, tu, cuma cuma bro. kalau ada <laughs> yang related to related to MQA question tadi yang prof Mahdirin eh Dr Mahdirin tu kan. Cuma MQA dia galakkan kita ada sort of mitigasi lah bila yeah. student tu balik yeah. kalau lah dapat balik kan ada lah, terminudin hmm. supaya mana-mana kursus ataupun pencara yang uh, mengajar waktu online tu kalau lah diperlukan uh, mitigasi pro, pro, macam pemulihan lah ini mana-mana hmm. yang substan hmm. yang tu kurang tu diganti uh, itu uh, khususnya bagi program profesional lah kursus pro, hmm. pro, engineering accounting dan sebagainya. Hmm. Thank you Dr. Menudo. Ya, ya. Saya nak tambah sikit ya Prof ya. Uh, uh, Prof ada 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 tekan satu Swiss saja kat situ. Kita sebenarnya uh, sometime uh, along the way ni kita lupa uh, wujudnya dua perkataan yang sangat besar in 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 uh, learning uh, teaching and learning process ini uh, iaitu uh, remedial and enrichment ya. Yeah? So uh, mungkin nanti uh, uh, perkataan remedial and enrichment itu boleh kita gunakan balik ya yeah, implementkan dia balik apabila uh, yang yang macam prof Asyik cakap tadi uh, mitigation program dan sebagainya itu prof. Terima kasih. 